Pass it. Hey everybody, Dr. O. Uh, we're going to do a quick review on joints and articulations. So we won't cover like individual joints here, but uh, I know there's only three bullet points, but they're kind of meaty ones. So first, uh, know the functional and structural classification of each, each joint type. Let's start functional. So functional is how much movement can you get out of a joint. Uh, the first we have is the synarthrosis. That's going to be an immovable joint. Now there might be tiny bits of movement, but they're, uh, they're not going to move. So synovial joints think no movement. Then you have amphiarthroses. That's going to be slightly movable joints. So their job is primarily not going to be movement, but there is some movement there. And then you have the, the diarthroses, which will be your synovial joints, and they're going to be freely movable. So synarthroses, think no movement. Amphiarthroses, think, think a little bit of movement. And the diarthroses, or your synovial joints, is going to be freely movable. All right, and then the structural classifications. We basically have um, fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, and then we have your synovial joints. So I like to use a single, single word to kind of define them. Fibrous joints think um, holding things together, right? So they actually will, will resist movement. They're going to hold things together. Uh, the cartilaginous joints, they're going to resist compression. So when things are going to be squeezed together, you can have these cartilage pads that will resist compression. So fibrous joints hold things together real rigidly. Um, the cartilaginous joints, they resist compression. And then you have your synovial joints. Their primary function is movement. So it's holding things together, fibrous joints, resisting compression, cartilaginous joints, and then your synovial joints are going to be movable. Their, their job is movement. All right, next, know the types of synovial joints. Okay, sorry about that. So we break these down into uniaxial, biaxial, and multiaxial, or some would say triaxial joints. So your uniaxial joints think, think like a hinge joint, like my, like my elbow here, where the ulna and the humerus attach. So it's, it's freely movable. So all these are synovial joints. They're all freely movable, diarthrosis joints. But the question is in how many planes? So a uniaxial joint, like a hinge joint, would be freely movable in one plane. A biaxial joint, um, I like to think about like the carpal, uh, the, the, wrist, the wrist joints here where I can flex and extend my wrist and I can abduct and adduct it. So it's freely movable in two planes. And then your triaxial or multiaxial joints, those would be your ball and socket joints. So your shoulder and hip joints. So the big thing to remember here, and there, there are individual types that you'll learn as you go through the content, but the big thing here is um, there every joint is a compromise between mobility and stability. So like a synarthrosis, think about the sutures of your skull or like the gomphosis joints that hold your, the tongue and groove joints that hold your teeth into your sockets there. Um, there there's almost no movement, but they're very stable. I mean, you're more likely to break a bone in your skull than you are to do anything to that suture. So they, there are joints that sacrifice movement, mobility to be stable. On the flip side, you have like the shoulder joint and hip joint. They have to sacrifice stability to be mobile. Shoulder even more so. So the shoulder is, a, is, is more mobile than the hip, but that makes it even less stable than the hip, which is why dislocating your shoulder is so much easier than dislocating your hip compared to dislocating your sutures, right? So just think about that. Every joint in your body is a compromise or a balance between stability and mobility. The more mobile a joint is, the less stable it is and vice versa. So, all right, uh, know your key joint movements. You know, those are things that are covered in other places, but uh, flexion, extension, hyperextension, abduction, adduction. I can just tell you a few here, but um, I definitely want to cover flexion, extension, hyperextension because I don't really like that term hyperextension, at least how it's used. So, so flexion, anytime you decrease the angle at a joint, that's called flexion. Anytime you increase an angle at a, jo at a joint, it's called extension. Hyperextension, by definition, is anytime you extend a joint beyond the anatomical position. So what I mean by that is, here I'm flexing my neck, here I'm extending my neck. Now technically when I look up, I have hyperextended my neck. Now I'm from the clinical world where when I hear about a joint being hyperextended, I think, oh man, are you okay? You know, so I think hyperextension means extending a joint or moving a joint beyond its anatomical or normal range. So just be careful when you hear someone talking about hyperextension. Like if I told you, man, I hyperextended my neck, um, you know, when I got out of bed this morning or something, you might think that there's something wrong with me, but all that means is I looked up. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, hyperexten you know, hyperextension does just mean beyond the normal anatomical position. So that's flexion, extension, hyperextension, abduction, adduction. So I think abduct means you, when you abduct a child, or I hope you never do, um, you take them away from their family. So abduction means to take away. So abduct something, you take it away from your midline. 
adduct, you add it back. So that's how I remember those. Abduct, take away from the midline. Adduction, uh, bring back. So I like to say abduction and adduction. Abduction and adduction. Uh, let's see, pronation and supination. So uh, supination, think about a bowl of soup. If I were to ask you to put a put a bowl of soup, you know, to put a bowl of soup in your hands here, you are supinating your forearm to do that. So pronation takes your hands from the anatomical position and moves them. They're facing posteriorly. Supination would bring them back to the anatomical position. So pronation, supination. When you're taking a drink, that you're pronating your forearm. Supination would be the opposite. Um, let's see. Plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, so how I think of that, plantar flexion, I'm planting my toes in the ground, so I'm standing on my tippy toes, that's plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, you're standing on your heels. Um, inversion versus eversion, so that's important like with sprains of the ankle. Most sprains are inversion sprains where the sole of your foot turns in, turns medially. Eversion would be the opposite, where your the sole of your foot is, is lateral. So let's see here flexion, extension. So you have like your, your rotations. So you can have just normal, normal rotation like or with your spine. Uh, you can have um, medial rotation, also known as internal rotation, lateral rotation, also known as external rotation. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you, I'm going to get all the movements here. I'm just kind of going on top of my head, but those are the joint movements we're talking about. It's better to find resources where you can see them happening. So, okay. I just wanted to type a few loose ends there about joints and articulations. So have a great day.